This is utterly revolting, and I cannot believe that a pastor would say this from the pulpit. I think this pastor should be defrocked and have his preaching license taken away. Your spouse is not your property. What's happening guys? My name is Jordan and welcome back to Let's Be Real. If you liked the last video, then I'd really appreciate it if you left a comment, hit the subscribe button, and click that bell so you get notifications on whenever I put something out. Today, we're going to be looking at a clip from a sermon called Unholy Deadlock or Holy Wedlock. This sermon was preached by Dr. Burnett L. Robinson, the former senior pastor at the Grand Concourse Seventh-day Adventist Church in New York. Now this hits home for me a little bit because the Seventh-day Adventist denomination is the one that I belong to. So let's go over what the doctor has to say. Wives, you must submit yourself to your husband as unto the Lord. I want you to know up front, ladies, that once you get married, you are no longer your own. You are your husband's. Okay, so there was a half of that that I agreed with. The verse that this is taken from is Ephesians 5.22, and it's a passage commonly used by conservative Christians to validate male-dominated hierarchy in the church. These are often the same people who use Genesis 3.16 as a reason why men should rule over women, not realizing that this is a descriptive statement from God about how things will be because of sin, not a prescriptive statement about how things should be. Man and woman were equal before the apple. But if these people would just take a look at the preceding verse in Ephesians, they would find that Paul says we should all submit to each other in reverence to Christ. And I don't think it's a stretch to assume that while Paul zeroes in on the submission of women to their husbands, most likely because of the patriarchal nature of the culture at the time, the message of submission to each other extends to both men and women, both husband and wife. Which is why the second part of that statement about women belonging to their husbands feels so weird. The Bible states pretty clearly in Genesis that after marriage, man and woman become one flesh. So, like, technically wouldn't you own each other? Like, the idea that you're putting forth about men owning their wives in marriage is already kind of weird and archaic. And as we mentioned before, a direct result of sin, not the way God intended things to be. So, why are you bringing it up? I saw in court the other day on TV where a lady sued her husband for rape. Wait, no. You're not about to say what I think you're going to say, are you? I would say to you, gentlemen, the best person to rape is your wife. Have you lost your righteous mind? So let me make something very clear right off the bat. This is utterly revolting, and I cannot believe that a pastor would say this from the pulpit. So in the interest of removing doubt from anyone's mind, it is absolutely possible for you to rape your spouse. The Violence Against Women Network claims that approximately 10 to 14 percent of women in the United States are raped by their husbands. One third of women reported having unwanted sex in their marriage. And those are just the ones brave enough to come forward about it. This is why we need to exorcise thinking like this from Christian and Adventist communities. The type of thinking that allows men to domestically and sexually abuse women and then try to justify it biblically by saying that they have ownership over their wives. I got news for you. Your spouse is not your property. They belong to God first as his child and creation, themselves second as a free-thinking human being, and you third as a willing partner in a relationship. There are like two levels of authority before we get to you, my guy. But people like this believe that it is their God-given right to get sex from their wives whenever they want, even if that means taking it by force. Even though in the very same chapter, Paul says that men should love their wives as they love their own bodies. If you love your spouse, then you should care about their consent to the act of intercourse. And you know who agrees with that? Paul! In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4, which is a verse that people who think like this conveniently overlook. Paul says that both husband and wife have a ownership of the other's body in marriage. 
He goes on to say that we shouldn't deny our spouses their natural desire for marital sex unless they consent. Now, to be fair, the Grand Concourse Church and the Greater New York Conference of Seventh-day Adventists put out a statement apologizing for Dr. Robinson's rhetoric, saying that he has issued an unqualified apology, resigned his position as head pastor, and been put on administrative leave. Now, on a personal level, I hope that this pastor does some deep reflection and asks both God and those hurt by his words for forgiveness. But as a matter of the spiritual and emotional damage done, I don't think resignation and administrative leave is nearly enough. I think this pastor should be defrocked and have his preaching license taken away. Because A, he's preaching a non-biblical message, which I hope I've demonstrated, and B, people who think like this are more likely to have other harmful non-biblical beliefs. And we cannot allow that in the pulpit of the Adventist church or any other church. Thank you.